today, we talk about propaganda. Tomorrow, we talk about the known universe and all of its planets. You have 24 hours. Hey guys, and we're back with Civics Review. And today our objectives are looking at media and political communication. At the end of this video, you need to know what the seven different types of propaganda are and how to identify them. And they are glittering generalities, plain folks, transfer, bandwagon, testimonials, and name-calling. I suppose the first thing we need to go over is what exactly media and political communication means. Media we've gone over before, meaning any kind of information we're going to receive from outside sources, like the TV, the internet, your phone. Political communication is going to come from our government, like the White House, or even from the political parties. Now, the information from both of these groups is going to share a lot of ideas with the people. Now, these ideas can either be given to us as information straight up, or it can be used to promote an idea or to influence us in some way. Now, both of these newspapers came out the day after Trump won the election. We can see on the left, we're getting some pretty standard information, and on the right side, they're definitely trying to influence the people and promote a certain idea about Trump's victory. That's where we get into propaganda. You might already have some ideas about what propaganda means, some kind of conspiracy theory or brainwashing or subliminal messages or mind powers. Uh, you're not far off, but essentially what propaganda is, what we can write down in our notes, is it's just information, but it's usually misleading in nature. It's trying to promote a certain political idea or point of view. These points of views can be very powerful, especially the way that we consume media nowadays, helping us link ideas that we, we might not have had prior to seeing something. Now, we have propaganda in schools. They post this on the wall all the time. So let's see if this poster here follows the definition of propaganda. Is this information? Sure. Now, does it promote an idea? Absolutely. It's a very powerful message here. The drugs are bad or cigarettes are bad for you. Now this type of propaganda usually has a positive impact on schools, but you can also have a very negative impact on society and people as a whole when you use propaganda. The Nazis were pretty famous for using propaganda to influence the people of their country, that their race was superior to others, and that they should eliminate certain other races for their inferior qualities. This is known as mass genocide, and that's really scary when you think a bunch of posters hanging on the wall actually convinced an entire nation that mass genocide was okay and that everybody's doing this. Now, one other point I want to mention real quick is that you might not understand how powerful propaganda can be because we can simply turn off our TVs or phones and not see it. But in some countries, some governments place their propaganda everywhere, and I mean everywhere. Take a look at this picture here of North Korea. Walking the streets, these people are bombarded by their own propaganda to influence them about how great their leader is and how great their country is. Okay, and the first propaganda technique we're going to go over is testimonial. We should write this down in the notes. Using a famous or authoritative person to recommend something or vouch for or endorse a product. So we can see here, I went from a B- minus to an A+. Plus. Hooray! And Shaquille O'Neal, somebody who was well-known uh, promoting certain <laughs> products, people are more likely to purchase these things. But if we look in the political spectrum, if someone like Barack Obama, say, were to endorse somebody, people would be way more likely to support that person, even though they don't really know who that person is. The power of testimonial is very real and very influential and super awkward sometimes. All right, the next technique we're gonna learn is called bandwagon. And this is a phenomenon in which people do something only because other people are doing it, even if it goes against what they believe in. It's sort of the idea of human beings to conform to those around us. And so we can see this first in a commercial form, like say McDonald's. 99 billion hamburgers served, my goodness, get me in line for one of those delicious things. Well, the same goes for Oreo slogan, America's favorite cookie. It makes it feel like everybody enjoys this cookie in America, and so you should get some Oreos too. Governments can also put out their own form of bandwagon propaganda. Here we see Chairman Mao of China sort of uh, promoting the idea that everybody believes in him and is going to follow him. It ended up costing them around 30 million lives 
uh, who died following this guy's ideas. Our own government has used this technique as well to sort of promote the idea that we all need to help out. Everybody's part of this war effort uh, to defeat our enemy. Okay, the next technique we're going to go over is the plain folks technique. We're going to write down that people tend to empathize and listen to the concerns of the common person, even if you're not one. And so we can see here from this graph the the percentage of money in the United States, that dark blue is the top 10%. The bottom light blue color, which you can barely see, is the 50%, the lowest 50%. And so when someone from this top percentage, the dark blue, tells us that we should do something, we really don't listen to them because they don't live in our world or universe. They have millions of dollars and they don't understand our problems. And so they'll try to attempt to look like someone from the red or the light blue saying, hey, we're one of you. Okay, the next one is transfer. This one we've also called priming before in our class. And this is projecting a positive or negative quality to something else. So it's a transfer, like a file transfer. So when we see Santa Claus here with Coca-Cola, we have positive images or ideas about Santa Claus bringing us presents. And so we transfer those good feels over to the product, which is Coca-Cola. Politicians do this all the time with the American flag or the Statue of Liberty in the background. We see those things and we think patriot. They love their country. It can work in the other way too, which is negative. We see a negative picture of Obama or Trump. We might have negative feelings towards them. Okay, the next technique is called glittering generalities, and this is using positive words or shiny words to make something sound great without really describing what it's doing. This one's really easy for students to figure out and pick up on a test, so let's go through it. Something like built for tough or everything goes better with coke. Lots of great words here, but it doesn't really tell us. Built for tough, well, how tough is your truck? Is it tougher than other trucks? Politicians tend to do this as well. Obama's campaign used glittering generalities like hope and change. Trump used make America great again, as did Reagan. In fact, all politicians really use this glittering generality technique to promote positive ideas without really describing anything. Another easy one to figure out for students is name calling, and that's just bringing negative attention towards something, and we know what this looks like just from our own experience. It's actually more common than you think in the world of politics. Candidates, and even presidents who are in office, attempt to make their opponents look really bad. And while this form is very recognizable, when we talk about our enemies and we depict our, our opponents in wars, uh, sometimes it's more difficult to see the name calling, with the way we depict our enemies as monsters. And this goes for our enemies as well, like North Korea really wants to destroy the United States. They do not have a great depiction of American soldiers or American people. So it's really all based on the perspective of who's giving out this propaganda. Okay, we've reached the final technique, and we call it card stacking. And this is simply stacking the deck, using information uh, that will make you look good, and you're going to omit or not include information that's going to make you look bad. Uh, it's like stacking the deck in a card game. You're never going to lose uh, if you can set the cards up just right. We can see here these Burger King fries. Wow, they look like way healthier by these statistics, which is going to influence a lot of people to eat them. But there's no way when you fry these things in oil that they're going to be healthy for you at all. And when politicians use this technique, they're only going to focus on certain aspects that make them look good or their opponents look good bad. Like here we see Obama the only candidate fighting for the middle class. I guess the other guys just hate the middle class and they're only trying to get the votes from the upper class and the lower classes. All right, and finally, we want to make sure you guys understand that propaganda can be mixed and matched. It can be put, you can have all of them in one poster, or two of them, or just one of them. It's not like, okay, this is only bandwagon, or this is only testimonial. So let's take a look at a few examples, and we'll see if we can't pick out a few propaganda techniques we see there. And the first most famous one we're going to be mentioning is the Uncle Sam's I Want You for the U.S. Army poster. So what are the techniques we see? Well, firstly, we see bandwagon. Uh, everybody should be doing this. I want everybody. We also see transfers, idea of positive American messages in this image. Up next, we have a real propaganda ad from Hillary Clinton. This one says, would you vote for Clinton as president? 57% say yes. We definitely see card stacking here. They're stacking the deck in their favor. Who knows who they're asking? 
Uh, we also see bandwagon, meaning everybody's doing this. Uh, you should vote for her as well. The last technique we see is transfer. We can see the seal of the Secretary of State behind her. We know that she uh, loves her country and she's a patriot because of those things. Okay guys, that's it for now. Thanks so much for sticking to the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. We'll make more videos soon.